So I have a show for you guys. Like I've never been more excited to share about a show that I think is being completely, completely slept on. Maybe not completely slept on in other countries, other parts, because uh, it does get awards, but just it's not mainstream. It's not something that I see a lot of people talking about. And I think it is well deserved the watch and it is well deserved being talked about on Twitter and just from on a weekly basis whenever the show airs. Now, this show is coming to an end, um, unfortunately, uh, because I got onto it late. Um, it is three seasons. The last episode is in a few days from the time that I am filming this. Uh, the show is called Mr. In Between. It's on FX. You can catch up on the past seasons on Hulu. I love this show. Like, I can't even stress it. I love this show for a multitude of reasons. Number one, it is written, produced, and starring Scott Ryan. I mean, that's hella talented. But when you dive into this show, this, this reminds me, it's a dark crime, it's a dark comedy, but it reminds me of a mix between Dexter and Breaking Bad. It's, it's that good. And this consists of so many different things. Um, really, the dialogue, the writing, this is some of the best writing I've seen in a very, very long time. The show is only 30 minutes, and I kid you not, I feel like I wish it was longer because I enjoy it, but even at 30 minutes, you watch it and you never feel cheated. You never feel like, you know what, man, they could have gave me more. I can't wait for next. You're going to look forward to the next week episode, but you're going to be satisfied with what you got. It's that good. <laughs> okay? Just, just, just trust me. Now, what is this, what is this about? This is about friendship. It's about love. It's about parenting. Scott Ryan, he stars in the show as Ray. And he's a hitman who's trying to juggle his parenting life, right? His everyday life. And so you kind of see him in between this sort of double life where on one end, he's a contract killer. On the other end, he has a daughter. Um, he's separated from the mom, uh, the child's mother. But he is... I mean, it's some of the best dialogue I've ever seen between him and his daughter, especially him and his daughter. And if you're a parent out there, you are going to appreciate some of this dialogue because it's real. It's real. You watch this show, you see some of the conversations and you're like, yeah, I could see that. I could see that happen. I could see me saying something like that. You know, and this is a show with no agendas, no nothing. Like you just, you can get lost in this show. And when it comes to the dialogue, and I can't stress this enough, especially between him and his daughter, it is some of the best father-daughter dialogue I've seen ever, probably. I, like, I can't even think of another show that is, has that type of closeness, that type of realness, that even you watching it, you feel like you could take some cues from that, or you're just watching and you're just... You're just in awe of the honesty between him and his daughter. And I'm sure some people, I don't have a daughter, I don't have kids, but I'm sure some people out there wish they had the type of relationships that they had with their, you know, with their child, where their child can come to them and talk to them about certain things. And so I think, you know, this is something that you'd appreciate. But also, the thing about this is that there's, there's some awkward silences that happens throughout this show. And you're watching this and there's certain things that don't need to be said. You just feel it. You know, you can see the eye contact, the body language, and you don't need the words to be said. And it, they just, I love how they just sit on that in that moment. I'll give you an example, right? You know, people always talk about in relationships about, you know, be with the person who you could be yourself with and, you know, you can party and all this other stuff. And it's never hard to find somebody when things are on the up and up to be with you. Like anybody's going to want to be around you when things are on the up and up. It's really about the people who are around you when things aren't going so well, right? But also when it comes to communication, it's about the person who understands you without you even having to say anything. When you can sit next to someone, your significant other, and not say a word, and nobody feels uncomfortable, marry that person. Just, 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 just trust your boy, marry that person because 
that's a level of communication that that means something, you know, and that happens a lot in this show where you're just watching the two actors and you just you 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 know what they're thinking, but they don't quite say it. You know, they, they leave you almost they leave it up to you for interpretation in a way. I like that. I think that's great writing. I think if you're somebody who's in film school or you you really watch films, I think you could appreciate that. You know, it's it's to me it's, it's sort of like a lost art. Nowadays shows feel like they have to explain everything to you. You know, like the viewer is dumb. No, this is one of those shows where I feel like you can watch it and you can sort of take away, you know, you can add your own flavor to it and get your own interpretations. So I, I, I really like that aspect of the show. But this is something that I think a lot of people are going to appreciate later. Like, I feel like this show is going to hit, I don't know, probably even Netflix and that's when people are gonna be like, "Yo, this is a good show." Sort of reminded me of a show that I uh, that I picked up on before this, that I actually um, went on Twitter and actually started a conversation about. And a lot of people, you know, felt the same way I felt about the show. They were just learning about it. It's called Start Up, and I just, you know, it's and that and that show Start Up was did like four seasons or something, like four or five seasons. So <laughs> it's something to be said when you're just like, "Damn, how did I miss this?" But I mean, that can be, the case can be that there's just so much content out here these days and there's so many shows, but this is just one of those shows that I think just kind of, I don't know, maybe it kind of came out at the bad time where there's just so many other things and people aren't really focused, especially on FX. There's not really much to go back to FX for. Uh, I think the only show that I really was drawn to on FX was Sons of Anarchy, one of my favorite, one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, but that's about it. You know, people watch HBO, Showtime, AMC, and, you know, like nobody really focuses on, on that. And I think that's why this show gets lost. But I encourage you guys to definitely go watch it. It's an easy binge. It's a quick binge. Um, like I said, it's on its final episode. And I hate to see it go, but I'm glad I caught it. So I'm sharing it with you guys. Let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you like this show. Um, let me know if you got some other recommendations, you know, and let me know if you like this type of videos. If you want me to share more of my recommendations, more shows that or movies that I've seen that I don't think people quite know about. Let me know, you know, let me know down below. So if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button. Peace and love. I'll catch you on the next one. Go watch that show now, right now, right now. Go watch it.